The UK consortium has just published the first early release observation science results. Five reference papers about the survey, the instruments and the simulations, and 10 science papers. And to accompany this, five new stunning images. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, we're talking about Euclid's new images. So let's go. Euclid Space Telescope is ESA's optical and infrared observatory, building a 3D map of our universe to help solve the mysteries behind the dark universe. I made a video about the details, so please check it out if you haven't already. They started their survey operations in February, but they're still fine tuning their data pipelines. But in the meanwhile, ESA called for a special early release observation or ERO program in order to collect one day of astronomical observations that could showcase the capability of Euclid with a priority on communication and outreach. In the end, six proposals were selected. A first glance at free-floating baby Jupiters with Euclid, Euclid's view of Milky Way globular clusters, a Euclid showcase of nearby galaxies, a galaxy cluster seen with Euclid, a cluster of galaxies, and a glimpse into Euclid's universe through a giant magnifying lens. Now, I'm not gonna go into the details of these papers here, but the program looked at 17 targets in total, five of which we saw images released back in November, 2023. And now they've released five more. So let's take a look. First up is Abel 2390. Abel 2390 is a massive galaxy cluster located about 2.7 billion light years away from Earth in the constellation of Pegasus. With more than 50,000 galaxies bound by gravity, it's a huge reservoir of dark matter, and it acts as a giant magnifying glass on the even deeper universe. From ground-based data of SDSS9, this is what ABEL 2390 looks like. As you can see, it's obvious there's a big cluster of galaxies here. I mean, it's an ABEL object after all. Recall that the ABEL catalog are objects that were discovered through meticulous examination of photographic plates by eye back in the 1950s. But even in the SDSS data, there's no sign of gravitational lensing. Euclid data is four times sharper than those that we can take from ground-based telescopes. The observation reveals many more galaxies, sharper galaxies, and some things we don't see in the ground data at all. Multiple giant curved arcs caused by strong gravitational lensing. Remember that this is when the gravity from the galaxy cluster is so strong that it distorts the light from the galaxies behind that cluster, warping the galaxy's light into an arc. In some places, the gravity is so strong it produces multiple images of the same galaxy. And a famous example is this straight arc here. This remarkably straight arc has two breaks, dividing it into three segments of roughly equal brightness. They're all believed to be images of the same galaxy. It's multiple lenses and strong lensing arcs like these ones that provide valuable constraints on the distribution of dark matter, and it allows us to model the distribution of mass in the cluster. You may also have noticed these arcs around all the brightest stars. These arcs, they're not strong lensing effects, but instead they're artifacts caused by persistence from the micro shutter assembly wheel actuations. Persistence is caused by a slight delay in the detector's response after being exposed to bright light. When the micro shutters open and close during observations, this can cause a faint ghost-like image of the shutter movement to appear in the final image. Now these effects are expected and they're not a flaw in the telescope system. Euclid's cutout view of Abel 2390 also shows the faint intracluster light emitted by stars that don't belong to a parent galaxy. They just exist in intergalactic space. Some studies have found a good correlation between the spatial distribution of intracluster light and the dark matter distribution in clusters. So potentially it could be used as a tracer for dark matter. But this emission is extremely faint from the ground, so that's something Euclid will be amazing for. 
ABOUT 2390 was the prime target in their early release observation paper, a preview of Euclid era for a galaxy cluster magnifying lens. But it's not the only one. The other prime target is another ABOUT cluster, ABOUT 2764, and they also made this round of released images. The paper showcases both weak and strong lensing capabilities of Euclid. When you compare this cluster with the ground-based DSS-2 observations of it, and how many more galaxies and how much sharper it is, you really get a sense of why Euclid is needed for this kind of work. To get accurate mass modeling of the distribution of dark matter using weak gravitational lensing, we need to measure the shapes of galaxies as accurately as possible. The effect of gravitational lensing is a distortion of the shapes of the galaxies, but it's an order 1% or less. So the more galaxies that you can measure shapes for, the better you can constrain the signal. With the help of strong gravitational lensing and a technique known as dropout, where you look at what wavelengths astronomical sources disappear at, i.e. in some filters you might see them and in others not, with this dropout effect, it's possible to identify really far away galaxies in both ABOUT 2390 and ABOUT 2764. And by far away, I mean galaxies with redshifts greater than redshifts of six. These galaxies are known as Lyman break galaxies or LBGs for short, and 30 of such are found in this image of ABOUT 2764, with one source being as far away as a redshift of 7.7. .7. That corresponds to when the universe was just 680 million years old, as 5% of its current age. 139 are extremely red sources, ERSs, which will also be very far away galaxies, but not quite so far away as LBGs. They're still useful to learn about the early stages of the universe's evolution and how galaxies formed. It's so important that these sources made a paper for themselves. Now, if red galaxies are really far away galaxies, then these blue splodges must be nearby galaxies, right? No, these blue fuzzy splodges are actually optical ghosts, artifacts that are a result of the complex optical systems that also pair with a bright star. Messier 78, or M78 for short, is a reflection nebula, meaning it shines by reflecting the light off of nearby stars. It's located in the Orion constellation, about 1,600 light years away from Earth, and it's part of the much larger Orion molecular cloud complex, a large reservoir of gas and dust where new stars are actively forming. Within M78, there are prominent dark clouds, dense concentrations of interstellar dust that obscure the light from stars and glowing gas behind them. They appear as dark patches or streaks known as dust lanes against the brighter background of the nebula. In ground-based data, the nebula looks like this, but you can see so many more details in the Euclid image. The wispy threadlight filaments form through a combination of turbulence, magnetic fields, and gravitational instabilities within of the molecular cloud. They can also be sculpted by the winds and radiation from young massive stars that play a crucial role in tracing gas flow and the influence of magnetic fields. Now this nebula is not just prettier in Euclid. The NISP instrument, Near Infrared Spectrometer and Photometer, allows us to peer through the dust to reveal hidden protostars and young stellar objects within the central bright stellar nursery behind these clouds. Similarly, we see star forming regions in the upper left and lower right. The infrared light emitted by the young stars and protostars can penetrate this dust unveiling details about their formation and evolution that would be invisible at optical wavelengths. By analyzing the infrared spectra obtained by NISPs, astronomers can also determine the temperatures and densities and chemical compositions of these objects. Euclid's instruments are so sensitive that they can detect objects just a few times the mass of Jupiter. It's revealed over 300,000 new objects in this image alone, some of which are rogue planets that aren't associated with any star. It's still unclear whether these planets were ejected from their original solar systems, or if they formed independently in the depths of space. But with enough of them, they could potentially account for dark matter. 
Now, NGC 6744 is one of the six galaxies in the ERO paper, Deep Anatomy of Nearby Galaxies. This paper showcases high resolution sensitivity and the huge field of Euclid. NGC 6744 is one of the largest spiral galaxies in our vicinity, and it's often called Milky Way's twin due to its remarkable resemblance to our home galaxy. The central bar plays a crucial role in funneling gas towards its center, fueling stuff formation and potentially feeding a supermassive black hole. And the spiral arms where most of the star formation happens are actively moving and compressing gas to aid in this endeavor too. Euclid has sensitivity to detect low surface brightness emission. And this means it can even detect ultra diffuse dwarf galaxies and compact dwarf galaxies. Indeed, Euclid confirms the presence of four previously known dwarf satellites of NGC 6744 but it also detects a previously unknown dwarf galaxy that they call EDWC1. This is hugely surprising because this is a really well-studied galaxy. But not only is it able to detect these faint galaxies, but the spatial resolution of Euclid allows it to resolve individual stars within these galaxies. Now in the 24K image of the NGC 6744, we see several unusual circle-like features. These are distinct from optical ghosts, the blue patches we saw earlier. For one thing, they're not blue. Instead, these are artifacts that are likely caused by variations in sensitivity or dark current across the NIST detector chip. Dark current is an electrical signal that builds up in the pixels even when no light is falling on them. And it can be due to thermal fluctuations or imperfections in the detector material. These artifacts can be mitigated through calibration or masking in the final image processing as they try to do here in this enhanced image. And lastly, we come to the Dorado group of galaxies. This is a loose group comprising of about 70 galaxies, about 62 million light years away. The Dorado group is much larger than our local group that our Milky Way lives in. These two massive galaxies are in the process of merging and you can see the tidal tails and the interactions. These tails are streams of stars, gas, and dust that are pulled away from their host galaxy due to the gravitational forces exerted during these interactions. Studying these features can help astronomers understand how galaxies grow and evolve over time. The Hubble Space Telescope has previously focused on individual galaxies within this group, but thanks to Euclid's massive field of view and high spatial resolution, we can see both the wider field of the entire group and the galaxy interactions, but simultaneously also see the intricate details of the stars and the star clusters. I think it's safe to say that even though Euclid is still months away from their first results from their main survey, these first look results are pretty impressive. And it gets me super excited for what's to come, in particular for the cosmology results. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. And as usual, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.